Do you know the difference between 64 and 32 bit? Twice as many bits. <laughs> kind, yeah, I mean, sure, but. Do you, does it all make sense? No, can you explain it one more time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, basically, I'm. <laughs> Welcome to Game Gorgon. My name's Indigo. And I'm Krug. And today we're going. <laughs> and today we're here to talk to you about Fantasy Ground Unity Kickstarter. Yeah, that was good. That was smooth. I thought you were trying to come up with something nope, off it was, the top of your head, nope. but that's actually just the name. Nope, I'm just that smooth. Nice. <laughs> We did a review a while back yeah. about the difference between Fantasy Grounds and Roll20. Some of the complaints that I had, I would say, uh, are getting kind of reviewed and looked at with the new Kickstarter. Yeah, first of all, stuff that I didn't expect them to ever okay. add, and stuff that I think they absolutely needed to add. Oh, sure. There's like a smorgasbord of things. So we're gonna talk about all those features, we're gonna show you some of the Kickstarter videos, and then at mm -hmm. the end we're gonna talk about, I think, whether or not we're going to do it. And then you'll, have that information. <laughs> the whole crux of this, like the name implies, is that it's getting rewritten in Unity. Yes. So there's like this whole really well-proven game engine underneath it now that's going to allow a lot of features that are kind of baked into that engine. Things like multiplayer support, the way that it should be done, mm -hmm. as opposed to the way that we were doing it before with port forwarding. But let's start from the beginning. The first thing we wanted to talk about was 64-bit support. Yep, double which, bits. <laughs> yeah, which you obviously all understand because we explained it in the intro. Twice. Twice. What this means in practice is that you're going to have They'd be able to use more data, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> that sounds too much like a mobile phone. Twice as many bits. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it the way they put it. It's gonna allow you to use more content and larger content. Okay. It's not gonna help if you have a potato, but if you don't have a potato, you're gonna see some performance improvements here and you're gonna be able to use that performance overhead to use more stuff. Okay, so the, the, the UI looks better. No. <laughs> We're gonna get native support for Windows, Mac, and for Linux, which for, is like, hey, thanks. For like the three people that use it. Look, way, okay, hold on. Previously, Fantasy Grounds forced you to learn how to forward ports on <laughs> yes. your router. I will give them some credit. It tried to do it automatically. Yeah. It just, that's a super hit or miss thing. Sure. So one exciting actual like feature that affects the way you enjoy the product as opposed to just making things easier mm -hmm. is tile-based map building. Yes, I actually watched uh, the, the video on this. Mm -hmm. I really like it. Uh, even though like the version that he was working on was clearly not like the yeah. one that's going to be released, I really liked the idea of it. I really liked yes. like the, the fact that it will snap to the, the spot. You can choose the size of the grid. You don't have to worry about like downloading a pre-gen map and then like futzing with the grid placement anymore. Now you you just have these little tiles and then they fit into the grid. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that you, like that's how you work with the, the system. And they're going to have artwork that you can use from and you can import your own artwork. Yes, so and that second one, I, mwah, you are actually gonna get some, because they've hit already so many of their milestones, you're gonna get some of that stuff for free. Yeah. Well, okay, that was a dumb way of saying that. You're gonna get, if you, if you As support, a part of your yeah. purchase, you're going to get some of that like artwork that's pre-made by them, which looks really good, honestly. They have previews of all of it. I have hated almost every single pre-gen mm -hmm. like map system mm -hmm. that people have made. True. Because they're all so generic and blah. Yeah. Like they're not bland like bland is a good yeah. They're, yeah, they're just they're, they're bland. They're just like they're not the style I want. And then like if you want to go from like a rocky room to like a stone cavern, the to art like, style changes. Drastically. Yeah, and I just like I'm not a big fan of that mm -hmm. aspect of it. Hopefully, Fantasy Grounds Unity will like pick up and it'll grow a lot of steam, and there will be a lot more like user generated stuff. Yes, I get that the dungeon is supposed to just be the backdrop, but sometimes the backdrop should be pretty or look yeah. good. Yeah, you and know? there are actually a couple of aesthetic, more aesthetic things that they added, but I also don't necessarily think that those implementations are that good. So we'll get to that in sure. a second. Even if you aren't an artist and you wanna just do like some basic, like a tile to represent X as opposed to, to actually look like X and then be able to drag and drop them into a campaign, is beautiful, and then let your players use their imaginations yeah. because they're doing that anyways. Yeah. Now, uh -huh. if you want to uh, plug your pre-created uh, map tiles down in the sure. comments, yeah. do it. We'll have to manually approve every single one of them because you can't share links. That's true. But we will do it. I'll do it. Yeah. I do it. Next up, we're talking about the enhanced drawing tools, which look 
like something that I've wanted for a long time. It basically allows you to like texture a line and then like apply different colors and like textures to that line that you're drawing. You could really easily create a river okay. by like drawing a blue squiggly line. When you simplify it like that, it sounds really like just like, oh, MS hey. Paint? Yeah, exactly. But yeah. I mean, just, like you can see the Yeah, and it's got yourself. texture on it, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. yeah, 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 sure, I get you. This one's really cool. I'm a little upset because I don't think a lot of people will get the value out of this that it has the potential to provide. But this is like, throwing in every dice mechanic into this game without actually necessarily supporting every RPG ever. Okay. There's support for like exploding dice and macros, things that D20s or dice in general can create. There's something called penetrating dice that I didn't really understand. <sighs> Giggity. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's not super complicated like coding. Like if you want to use an exploding dice like in Hijinx and not Hijinx, that's, uh, okay, hold on. What? Like kids on bikes. Kids on bikes. Hey, by the way, go check out hijinks and handlebars. That's right. This show's turned into promoting our other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just have too much other stuff. <laughs> Don't have enough other stuff. Agreed. Like subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> I want to roll two d six e. Means that if they roll a six, it will add six and roll again and add that number. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of super no, no, awesome I, potential there. Yeah, I don't know. It's like- And it, that's why I said I was upset that I don't think a lot of it, people are gonna get use out of this. Like, I think it's, I, I really love it that they did it. I just don't think it's the most exciting feature that they're offering in this change. Like, I think there are, are a lot more features that other people are going to be using more often. At the end of the day, most uh, content creators like Hunters Entertainment and Kids on Bikes, yeah. they're probably going to be trying to implement their system within yeah, these, yeah, yeah. these games, that work, the hard work is going to get done by someone else. Hopefully. This is just basically a stop gap in certain situations right. or homebrew rules that you're doing. So I, it's a niche market it and is, I get that. But I but think it's exciting for that market. For the five Linux users. Yeah. <laughs> we gained three Linux users between last time and now. Do you notice the drastic shift in tone? <laughs> How do you feel about the, uh, the skins. Look, look, I'm gonna be honest with you. The number one reason why this system turns me off is how f***ing ugly it is. Yeah. Skin support is a thing and has been yes. for a long time. Yes. I have Some to load the... into the game yep. and, and I start with a, a, a system that mm -hmm. looks like Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Yeah. And I'm just like. It does. <laughs> it gets mm -hmm. this weak shit out of here. I go to like roll 20, you know, and, ah! but comparatively. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to name the one that we keep talking about, Astral. We're gonna put the name on the screen. Yeah. That one looks good. It looks gorgeous. It has absolutely nowhere near the feature set of Fantasy no. Grounds. When I get something like that, I'm like, I'm willing to make this work, yeah. right? Versus slug through oh. something you don't get. Yeah. <laughs> and I get that it has skin support and I'm sure that there are some beautiful skins that the community has made. Yep. I just don't understand the need to make your Tabletop look like a like a fantasy table. Yeah, I can play Starfinder yeah. from it. I can play Call of Cthulhu. I can play D and D. Why does it look like a fantasy, like genre game? Stop. <laughs> Suffice it to say, we're not excited about the skins. Yeah. Next, dynamic line of sight, with enhanced toggle blockers. Which is actually, I, I like the toggle blockers a lot because it, it's basically a way to do doors. I just like the name toggle, toggle blockers. blockers. Me too. I think this is a really good implementation of this feature. I think there are very few ways to deviate from how this should be implemented as far as like mm -hmm. how line of sight works. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is a good implementation of it. This is just like, this is, I feel like this is going to be what everyone expects it to be. Yeah. Which is all you can really ask for. It's it's a great feature, continue doing it. Great. Yeah. <laughs> when we were talking about skins, we also mentioned that there were other aesthetic improvements that were going to be made. This is one of them. Okay. It's called animated image effects. Okay, so like if I have a river, like I can make the water look like it's moving around? I don't think so. Okay. It doesn't seem like it. Okay. It seems like this is an overlay for the entire map. Okay, so kind of like if it's raining, you'll see like rain Rain drops. or snow okay. or like fog over the whole map. That's all I saw. Even if it is just that, adding that extra layer is it's nice. Cool. Yeah. It's cool. Some missed potential being able to mask stuff out and like do it in layers so that mm -hmm. you can have like just the water animate. That is the next step here. I feel like this is a little bit too simple for me to be like, this is a great value add for the thing that you're buying. It feels like a slap on. Yeah, let's just put some like green screen rain, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. over everything. 
if this evolves over time, it won't make me mad. Yeah. Now, they're adding all that stuff, but they're also keeping backwards compatibility with all of the um, DLC from Fantasy Grounds Classic. So if you have that stuff, you can still use it in right. Unity? Okay. The right way to do it. If you already own Fantasy Grounds Classic, there are upgrade paths available to you. The upgrade... Like via the Kickstarter? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. via the... I'm fairly certain it's also available after the Kickstarter. I'm not Oh, oh I'm, 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 check that too. I'm almost certain. Yeah. There's also just like you can buy it without <laughs> upgrading. Like you don't need to have a previous license. You can just buy this one. I think it's worth it still. Yeah. This is what I said last time. If you have the means to afford this. Yes. If this is within your means, you, I think you should do it. Mm-hmm. If you don't have the means, I don't think you should stress about it. I think other things get close enough, they're yeah. free. Or free adjacent. Look, look, Roll20's free option is a very quality system. It's compelling. System. This free option is fairly compelling. Yeah. Like, depending on how many players you're trying to yeah. run Yeah, so... Uh, yeah. See you out on the tables. If you're one of the four Linux users, go head down to the comments and let us know why you've chose to, I don't know, ruin your life? I don't, I don't know. Uh, while you're down there in the comments, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, make sure to hit the bell icon if you haven't already, and then head over to Twitter and talk to me, and you can talk to me there at IndigoQT. You can talk to me on Twitter at CrewQT. You can talk to me about Linux. I won't make fun of you. I will. I, I, well, I'll block him. <laughs> Uh, you can also talk to, to us, us down here on these social media <laughs> things. I had a stroke. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.